uh, there's going to be some, in the proof worksheet that you're going to do, there's going to be some uh, justifications that show up or some reasons in the drop down menu that we haven't specifically gone through. So I want to talk through some ways that you might see them and, and some uh, conditions for when they worked. Okay. I think, all, except for these four, I think all the other ones we've, we've either done in a proof or you have seen before. All right, so the first is definition of bisect. Okay. This, uh, this justification uh, will only be used if the given statement specifically says in words that something is bisected. So if you're told that AB bisects CD at point E, let's say. And so if this is the given, if it has to be stated that something is being bisected, what you could then do is, again, based on the picture, so if AB bisects CD at point E. Okay, so let's take a look at what statements you could um, justify by this given statement here. Okay, so the things that are the relationships that can be justified by definition of bisect. Um, you can convert this, this from a word relationship into an equation relationship. What segments would be equal if AB bisected CD at point E? Now be careful because there's a common mistake made too, but what is the what is the one pair of distances that can be said to be equal based on that statement? And so the only one that you can identify here based on this statement is segment AB bisects segment CD. So you just know that CD is being cut into two equal pieces. So you could make the statement that CE is equal to ED and the justification would use definition of bisect. Again, you can only use that justification if earlier in the proof you see the phrase or the, the wording that something is bisected. And now there's no guarantee that AB is being bisected here by point E unless it specifically tells you. And so be really careful <coughs> with that. All right, let's take a look at the next possible justification. Perpendicular. And so for something to be, or in order for you to use definition of perpendicular as a justification earlier in the proof, and it usually has to be a given piece of information, you have to be given that, let's say, two segments are perpendicular. All right. So once again, if we have a drawing for this, a, B, and C, D are perpendicular. And let's say we call these angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 for this. All right. If you want to identify some justification or some statements that you can um, create based on this relationship, the two things are perpendicular, you can go one of two routes. You can go the equation route or you can go the relationship route. And the equation route you could make the statement that if A, B, and C, D are perpendicular, then they meet at what angle? 90 degrees, right? So you can make the statement, you know, you can create an equation that angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees, and you can do the same thing for all the other angles. I'm only going to show two of them right here to illustrate. Okay, but you could justify these statements by saying definition perpendicular. Okay, there's another set of statements that you could have written here. And the other set of statements is you could have said angle 1 and angle 2, and you could have extended it to angles 3 and 4 as well. But you can make the statement that those are right angles. So this is the relationship route. You can write as a step in your proof that this relationship holds true. And now, depending on which of these you choose, both of them can lead to the same ultimate conclusion, which is most likely what you're heading for in a proof. And that is, if you have two things equal to the same thing, then what do you know about these two things here? They're equal to each other. So you know that angle 1 is equal to angle 2, and the justification for that would be transitive property or substitution, right? Okay, so that would be the kind of the logical conclusion in, in the the sequencing. 
Now, if you chose to use the relationship route, so if you said those are perpendicular, so angles 1 and 2 are right angles, we can still make the statement that angle 1 and angle 2 are equal. We still come to the exact same conclusion. However, our justification would have to be different because this wouldn't be based on transitive property or substitution. It's going to be based on a relationship. Do we have any relationship regarding right angles? All right angles are? Equal. That's one of the postulates, right? And so you would just state that. <laughs> All right angles are equal. That was one of the postulates, one of the, the assumed truths that we began with. Okay. Once again, you can only use this if somewhere earlier in your proof, most likely in the given, you have a perpendicular symbol. All right, the next one that you're going to see is the definition of complementary. And so here it would specifically tell you something like angle 1 and angle 2 are complements. Okay, so again, it would most likely have to be given. And there's no way that this would really come up uh, in a, a user-created um, statement. And it would probably have to be given and so what it might look like is angles 1 and 2 okay, are complementary. And so if you're using this and trying to justify a statement, the only statement that you can create is what do you know about complements? They add up to 90 degrees. So you'd know that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. And the justification would be definition of complementary angles or complements. Okay, and that's really about it. There's nothing else that you're going to create. And in order for you to justify with this reason, the word complements or complementary has to be spelled out and included earlier or previously in the proof. Okay, if that word doesn't exist in the proof, you can't even use this as a reason. Even if you wind up creating this statement, angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90, and you wouldn't be able to say it by this, by definition of complement. And be careful on that. And then finally, uh, the last one, and the one that probably causes the most confusion, is a definition of supplementary. Right, so a definition of supplements or su supplementary can only be used once again if the word supplement or supplementary falls earlier in the proof again pretty much you're uh, restricted to it being in the one of the givens if it's not a given it can't be or it will very unlikely be part of your proof okay, and so if angles one and two are supplementary what does that mean about their relationship equal 180 and that would be definition of supplementary. And now here's why this is can create a problem. Is there's another relationship that's based or can look almost exactly the same <coughs> but that can be confused with definition of supplementary. And that is if you're given something like this. And you don't even need any givens here, it's just part of the picture. And so what relationship do you know holds true between angles 1 and 2 here? Okay, so if there was nothing else stated earlier that says angles 1 and 2 are supplementary, first of all, are they supplementary? Yeah, but they're supplementary not because it's said that they're supplementary. They're supplementary because of what? They're linear pair. So you would have to use definition of linear pair to justify the statement in this picture, but you could use or you would have to use definition of supplements or supplementary to justify the exact same statement in this other relationship. Yeah, the same holds true with angles. I mean, if you had uh, if you had an angle here and you were told that this bisects it, you would then make the statement that measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 2. 
by definition a bisector. Okay. Again, assuming that this was you were told that this is a bisector. If, if the if the supplementary angles are on the same line, it's a linear pair. Otherwise, the, again, the only reason or the only way that you'll bring up definition of supplementary is if the word supplementary appeared earlier in your proof. Okay. 